What's up guys, Shane here from 3D Printing, and today I'm checking out some dark orange PETG, or PETG, from 3D Printing Canada. Welcome back guys. So I've received several rolls of different types of filament from 3D Printing Canada and today I'm checking out their PETG or PETG, however you prefer to say it. And this is their dark orange. Now a PETG filament is a mix between, I'd say like a PLA and an ABS. It's strong yet easy to print. It's easy to print because you don't need a fan to be on. You don't need to be enclosed. Some people say you can get better results, but overall I felt that open air without a fan or a very low fan for overhangs works out great for me. All right, so it's a plain, simple brown box, no stickers on it except for the 3D Printing Canada sticker and the stats. It's PETG, 1.75 millimeter filament, dark orange, the SKU, and the recommended is the nozzle, 200 to 240. 200's pretty low for PETG, but we'll see. Base temp, 75 to 85 C. I generally print either 70 or 90 C on the print bed usually. Uh, it seems to work better depending on the filament, so we'll see what this one ends up working at. All right, inside we have the same two stickers, 3D Printing Canada, and on the other side, the STAT sticker. This is a non-resealable bag. That's kind of the standard here. It has a good vacuum on it, though, and a nice big silica pack in there. There that is. It has a pretty good smell to it, actually. I always smell filaments. Some people say it's weird, but, I mean, some different filaments I've received, they smell funky out of the box, and some don't smell too bad. This one actually smells pretty good. Wow, that is a vibrant, vibrant dark orange. Holy smokes. So, I actually think this is the first PETG that I've received that isn't translucent. This is opaque filament. I mean, it looks opaque right here, but I don't know. It, it very well may be. I'm super excited for that. And it's orange, and I, orange is one of my favorite colors. I don't know why, it just always has been. And one of my daughter's favorite colors, orange too. But yeah, I am, I'm super stoked to see how this is gonna turn out because I've never received, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, every, every PETG that I've received, and I've done what, a dozen, maybe more reviews of PETG filaments, have always been some type of translucent color or clear. It's the other thing, I hate clear filament. God, it kills me. Anyways, uh, it is a clip spool. Let's see, there's some glue in there. There's no wiggle in it. It's nice and solid. The wine, as you can see, is pretty decent. So yeah, I am super stoked. Let's get this on some printers and see how this stuff turns out. So here we are, the 3D Printing Canada orange PETG was fantastic. I don't know if it's just because it printed so well or it's because it is my first actual opaque PETG that I've received. The color is amazing. It really, really is. I used a little more than half the roll on all of this and I actually printed a few other things for some other projects I was working on, but I could not get over just how well this stuff printed. It just really worked out well. All of this was printed actually on my CR10S because I have that one pretty much set up for PETG with the PEI sheet and glue stick and having the new uh, high temp nozzle on that from Micro Swiss helps out. Not necessary for PDG, let's say that there, it's not necessary, but I just like that setup for that. And the prints just look so nice and the filament behaved so well. Very, very little stringing. A big problem with PETG that most people face, not everyone, and I faced it for quite a long time, because you're printing PETG hot and slow, you end up with like blobs every now and then. They'll just kind of like form on the nozzle a little bit, like your nozzle's printing, and some of it will just come up onto it, and eventually it will just get like a blob randomly on your print. I've had that with like every PETG that I've ever used, and maybe it's just my settings, or maybe it's just the filament I'm using. Not 100% sure, but it's very common throughout the community that that happens. Also, PTG is very stringy. Um, you can get around it a lot of ways. I've gotten around it most times. I'll still get the random wisps here and there, like uh, here on the benchy. There's a few little ones going through there and whatnot, but very little compared to other PTGs that I've tested. And you can see it so much more because it is this opaque orange. Most of the ones actually Every other one I've gotten has been a translucent or transparent clear. I had my Fugitech coin right there is the translucent red from Toner Plastics, their PETG, which was excellent stuff, but this, the color, just blows it all out of the water. 
Now, because I printed so many things, I'm not going into every single one, but I do want to show a few things real quick before we take a closer look. This is Angus's, the Angus, so Angus is Maker Muse on uh, YouTube, and this is his torture egg at 200%. And it works pretty well. Um, my tolerances aren't exactly perfect, and PETG is probably not the best filament to be printing this in, but it does spin uh, not terribly well. I mean, does it stick? No, but you can definitely feel where the ridges in the different layers were against each other. I only had to cut the center ring in one small portion. It just was touching a little too much there. I ran my X-Acto knife right through, took like a second, cut through it, and then all of a sudden they all started rotating without a problem. None of the top was bound at all. I found that his 100% model is really, really small. And I just, none of my, none of my printers are tuned that well to print his thing at 100%. Just, it's so small. And I also lack the patience to print PLA at, you know, anything less than 60 millimeters a second. That's just my personal, you know, use of it. I just, I don't want to take that long. I don't want to print at 30 or 40 millimeters a second. You might get better results. Mm, maybe a little bit. But either way, this was a very cool thing to test out and to, to play with. Again, it doesn't spin quite as well as it would maybe in PLA. I can't like grabbing the top here and spinning it. It's just, it's just I can't get enough leverage on it. Uh, it's also very slippery because PETG is a very glossy filament. So it actually is very, um, a lot of you actually will use this for bushings on things because it has such a glossy and almost, I don't even know what to call it. But just because the finish of it is so glossy, it glides over things very easy. It's almost like self-lubricating, but it's not. Like, you understand what I mean. But they're very cool thing either way. Um, other things, um, I saw this and just had to print it for my wife. A little bug catcher, which is, you know, ludicrous because there's no way she would ever use this. But it was a fun little thing just to print out. Uh, it prints in four parts. So you have those little basket, the paddle, and then each side of the scissors that just all clip together. Uh, just a little bit of CA glue to actually hold the scissors into the, the part. And yeah, I mean, you could just easily scoop something up here, you know. Would she ever use it? Oh no, my kids would more likely use this than she would, but Bug Catcher 2000. A fun little print. I saw it on Thingiverse and wanted to do it. But on here, I'll show you closer. You can see the little strings that are all, it's very uh, common in PETG prints. So here we have my maker coin. As you see in there, I say there's a little bit of stringing in here some little hairs, most of that will come off very simply, but it's just, again, common here. This one actually printed with no supports. I forgot to enable it. Uh, I normally do supports. I know this model doesn't need supports, but I do it just so I can experience how does it do when touching just the outsides or when it's actually printing over top the supports. I can kind of get a feel for the filament, how it performs by enabling support on this coin at 200%. But it performed miraculously either way. You can do see a little white on here. That is just some of the glue. I didn't take a, like a wipey or a wet uh, you know, paper towel or washcloth to kind of wipe that up, but that doesn't really matter. Here on the rounds of the cogs, the overhangs there, they just came out absolutely beautifully. And, you know, filled in right. I had my extrusion multiplier set just right. Again, just very happy with the first print on this. Not going to show all the prints, but I'll show a few of them. Uh, this is the top of Ganoff the White's um, staff that I was uh, printing for a friend. I'm doing a separate video on making that staff, but this actually came out really well. Uh, I should say making, I didn't design the top part, I did other parts, but um, I just wanted to try it out. But you can see very little stringing. This actually fell, so part of it popped off there. Very little stringing up here, but you can all see it's, you know, it's very smoothly extruded. Like there's no wobbling on this at all really. It's very solid, you know, no resonating through the shininess of the filament because usually with the shiny filament you can see all your errors in it. Uh, I was a little bit too close. I did have a little bit of elephant footing on here. You can kind of see it right there. It just kind of goes and loops out a little bit. Was a little too close with this on the first layer, but other than that, very happy. I did vase mode. I like to try and do vase mode in every print that I get. So it's, you know, one perimeter in vase mode with three bottom layers. Uh, this again was a little bit too close for it. I did adjust it later on, but these first few prints have that. Uh, it's very nice, very thick. It's very strong. You know, you can't bend, if you bend too far, I don't want to crack it, but if you bend too far, you will break these. Uh, these little, this is just a six-sided simple vase, but even in here, 
there's a little wisp on here and there's no retractions in a vase mode print. But even in here, you'll see a little wisp every now and then of something just because of the nature of PETG filaments. I don't know what causes that. I just know that it happens. Here's a great benchy, uh, super awesome benchy actually. My retractions all are right here, which is not the best. Uh, I definitely could tune a little bit better for this filament. But other than that, and there is a little bit of pimpling, so I probably could up my retractions a little bit more on this. Or have it, oh, see, here's one of those little blobs I was telling you about. So that kind of is just stuck in there, and now there's a little hole in the print there. So that is very common with it, uh, the very small one. And here's some of the little wisps that come off of the print. But yeah, I mean, super happy. There's no real echoing this. It did really well above the windows and the doors. The steering wheel looks great. The portholes here look awesome. You can see the hashtag 3D Benchy kind of. It's not totally perfectly clear. And then the CTC, CT3D.xyz. The D did not come out too great for some reason, but the rest of it was just awesome. So yeah, very, very happy with this. Uh, lastly, I just kind of wanted to try this. This is the little Hubison X4 a quad frame that I found on Thingiverse a long time ago and I printed it in several different materials. I'm testing them all out with my little quad as I'm learning, you know, the whole FPV deal. And this came out pretty good, except for I had pretty poor resolution here on the actual holes for the screws. I'll have to take a really, really fine uh, drill and just drill right in the center there to kind of get the screw hole back. But just for the temperature of PDG with no real cooling fan, I had it on like 30% for this one. You're not supposed to use it at all or very low with this type of filament, but that's okay. And it still did not cool enough on there for it to just deform. That's all right. Again, you can kind of hit that with a drill real quick, but that's just kind of, again, just a downfall of the filament. I have a couple of parts here. So this is just a 50 millimeter, I think this was a German uh, mortar round and it prints in three parts and just screws together, uh, threads and all, no support needed in it. Uh, I mean, probably could, you probably can't uh, if you adjust your uh, settings correctly. Uh, I can get this almost all the way. I'm, there's maybe a millimeter and a half gap between these two parts. I just can't because it's such a slippy filament. It just can't get that last little bit in there. I'm trying, I just can't get it. Uh, but I'm still very happy with how this turned out. It was the very first time I printed this this one, so it was a good kind of trial to see how it would behave, what I need to change. Probably need to add a little bit of support in here, um, just in the bottom, like like in the middle, and not like where the threads are. So I did add uh, support to another filament that I'm going to show you later on, but. Uh, that's just how this one showed up. And then this is gonna be the spool holder for the TiVo Tornado that I got in. I found this one online. I printed it in PLA, but this right here actually broke. So I don't know if it's the filament or if it's the print. Like maybe my tolerances are just too tight and it just can't you know, handle get this getting clipped onto the extrusion. I'm not sure, have not even fit this yet, but it goes on the upright like this and then down below is the extruder arm that goes back and forth and just holds your spool right there. This is the longer one, so you can fit those shorter fat rolls on here. But I'm, I'm happy for it, uh, and I really want to test it out. We'll see how it goes. So this, again, the color just blew me away with this filament. The, how it, well it printed also blew me away. So this is definitely a go-to PETG filament. It performed well in all different applications. Again, I try to do different prints that have different features. Uh, and they use different you know, methods of 3D printing. So they, it did well for all of them. So I'm very happy with all of them. So I'm happy to see other companies adding color to PETG because clear is just so freaking boring. But you have something like this, you have the strength of ABS, but the easy printability of PLA. That's why I like PETG. It fits that happy medium between ABS and PLA. So I want to thank uh, 3D Printing Canada for sending me this filament along with the other ones that they sent me. This is a great opportunity for me to try out filament from them, from our fellows up north. You know, I only know of them and uh, the other 3D Printing Canada company, which their names are very similar. Either way, uh, it's a great filament. I definitely recommend this stuff if you guys want to check it out. I'll put links to their website down below. It goes direct off their website. There's no affiliate links, anything like that. It's direct off them. So uh, if you like it, please go ahead and check it out.
And I will say the last thing, uh, I wasn't paid for this review and the money was exchanged, two or four. I don't, I don't know why I would pay them to send me filament unless I bought it. But anyways, uh, yeah, they didn't give me anything for this except for this role and a few other roles of different filaments to try out from their company. So I thank them for reaching out to me, which they reach out to me, which I love that. I didn't have to like badger them for anything. So that was very cool of them. So thank you, 3D Printing Canada. And that wraps it up, guys. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you think you want to check out this filament, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about it or if you have any tips or tricks for me to do in later reviews on a PETG filament. If you guys want to stay in tune with what's going on, make sure you become a subscriber and then hit that bell icon. That way you'll get an email notification anytime I upload new content. If you guys want to support me financially, you can go below me and hit that Patreon link. Donate me a dollar more on a monthly basis. I appreciate that very much, current Patreons. You guys are awesome as always. If you want to do it, not a monthly basis, just a one-time deal. There's a couple links down in the video description. You can check those out. And if you just want to, you know, do your daily shopping with some of my affiliate links, I'd appreciate that as well. A little slice of what you buy comes back here to help out the channel. And I appreciate anything you guys do, even if it's just to watch this video. Till now. Haha. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. So until next time, happy printing.